Welcome to the first episode of the Two Derby Nuts. Now, Jason and I have been friends uh, quite a long time, almost 22 years now, and we have been competing in design contests for the Derby for a long time, but we'll tell you a little bit of the history. And this is basically just gonna be a raw, you know, we're not professional video bloggers uh, by any means. Uh, we're just Derby Nuts. And we're gonna just be raw and real and chat a little bit about our obsession. I love the way Jason puts it, a disease with all things considered derby. And so we would just wanna share with you a little bit of our passion. So hopefully, and I know that there's a lot of other derby nuts out there, but maybe you're not one yet, but someday you will become one. So I, I just wanna uh, open this up and introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Scott Heima, and my name is Jason Maybray, and we both got involved in Christian Service Brigade in 1999. Uh, our sons uh, were in first grade, and we started to get involved at, at that time in what's called tree climbers. And at that time, there was not a derby for the age group tree climbers at our church. And so we had to wait till our sons were in stockade for third grade. So it wasn't for two years. But Jason, uh, I know that you grew up in Boy Scouts, and I did in Royal Rangers. Did you um, did you make cars as a boy? Yeah, when I was in Cub Scouts, um, so I'd be, I don't remember exactly what grades it was, but it was like basically stockade age. Um, yeah, we used to make cars. They, they didn't look anything like the cars that the kids make today. Mine basically looked like... Uh, a doorstop with some old model car parts glued onto the outside of it. Doorstop, cool. I liked it, yes, or a wedge. A lot of yeah. that, that was a very famous. Yeah. Did your Did your dad get involved in helping you at all? Oh yeah. Was yeah. he? Have you ever seen the movie? I, I'm sure you have the the movie Down in Derby. Oh yeah. Was your dad like that at all? No. Okay. He he wasn't what I would say a, a derby nut. He he enjoyed helping me do it. Um, you know, he liked when it came time to do that, and we we had fun doing it. I do recommend that movie though. So if you haven't seen the movie Down in Derby, it's about four dads. They go over the top. Uh, you know, there's one line in there I love. This is like, I can't wait till I'm a dad so I can make my own derby car. <laughs> so uh, how's everyone's pine with derby coming along? You mean how's my dad's pine with derby coming? I can't wait till I'm a dad so I can build my own car and race it. You'll get your turn when we get to the fun stuff. Your dad says that too? Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. But uh, I, I also, you know, as I had mentioned, I was in Royal Rangers growing up. My dad was my leader. And I started to uh, get involved in the Derby at that time. And I remember the, one of the first ways that I really kind of got interested in design is uh, I made a snowmobile. Now, it didn't look so great. Um, I, I thought that I could find it, but there is, I, I did have a car that I did find. I made this car, I don't remember what year, but I was probably about 14 or 15 years old when I, when I made this. And so I wanted to make something a little bit different, but I, I typically went for speed uh, early on in my derby nutness, if that's a, even a word. <laughs> so, uh, but as I had mentioned, I like how you call it a disease. What got you interested in design, you know, making the best looking car that you could make? Uh, one, I mean, 
you know, you'd see somebody that had a car that looked cooler than yours and you're like, oh, well, that's cool, you know, that, that they had that creativity. And, um, you know, I think as a kid, my designs were limited basically because the, the tools we had available were, were limited. You know, I mean, my dad basically had one of those like plastic miter boxes with the, the saw and, you know. Oh, yeah, yes. You know, we didn't have a, we didn't have a band saw. We didn't have a belt sander. We didn't have any, you know, any fancy tools to make a fancy car. So. Um, they, they were pretty basic. Um, but, you know, as I saw cooler designs, I thought, you know, it'd be fun to try that. So when my kids got to be, you know, of age to, to make a car, I started uh, playing around. And I still don't have a ton of fancy tools. I, I had a table saw instead of a handsaw. Um, but, you know, some of those early cars that, that I built with my kids, it was just what could you do with a table saw and just get creative. And, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, Kind of an artsy guy to begin with I, I like creating things um so and, and the other part of it is uh as far as the speed aspect of it i, I quickly realized with, with my kids you know seeing how how much time some of these other boys and their dads would spend you know getting the alignment just right and all this stuff like i couldn't compete <laughs> like <laughs> like so i got why i tell my kids like i i can't guarantee you a fast car but i can guarantee you will have a cool car because that was where my strengths were. Yes. And so it was a matter of, you know, just playing to my strengths and, and doing, you know, what we could do. If you recall, like Ed uh, mentioned, we, we, with our sons, we could not uh, race until they were uh, in third grade. But then it was soon after that, I think it was in 2006, that uh, when I became chairman of our brigade uh, unit, I said, we need an open division because I, you know, made, help my son make his cars. I had done that with uh, my older sons, even my uh, daughter, because there was a separate girls race, but I couldn't have that outlet. So in 2006, we started our open division. And so any, uh, any male in our church could make a car. And I basically did that selfishly for myself <laughs> because <laughs> I wanted to make a car to compete and race. And uh, I have to credit Jason quite a bit because he came in with a lot of great looking cars and I would go for speed quite often and I can make a fast car, but I really wanted to have some sort of a creative outlet as well. And so we're going to show you a few of the creations. Now, um, you can't see all of the cars in, in the shot here, but we'll, we'll, show you and then in future episodes we're actually going to tell a little bit of how we made them but all of the cars that we're going to show you now are actually ours none of these are our son's cars at all so like the yeah, jason's uh laughing because it is a disease uh i know that uh there's there's plenty of you out there like this um and this these episodes are being brought to you by stock car derby uh in christian service brigade many many years ago uh, there was a leader that lived in Washington State that moved to Chicago and Wheaton, Illinois to work for the national office. And the national office said, we need to start having, we would like to have our own brand and our own kits that we can sell. The Boy Scouts have actually trademarked the name Pinewood Derby. You can't use that, those terms outside of the context of the Boy Scouts. And so this uh, man was on staff and he said, oh, there's a leader and his name was Eldon Mantufel that he was a school teacher and he was making car kits for his brigade unit out in Washington state. And so he started making them officially for all of brigade nationwide. And it was his daughter who came up with the name Shape and Race. And uh, unfortunately, there was there were some legal issues that that had happened subsequently after that, uh, maybe about five six years ago, where we needed to come up with a new brand and a new name. We still have the same block of wood. This is uh, proprietary for us. This is how all these all of our cars start, and but we do have a, a brand new wheel, and it looks a whole lot more like a, a race car wheel. At, versus our old shape and race wheel. And that's how we got the name Stock Car and the Stock Car Derby. And I was actually looking through some old magazines from Brigade from the 1960s, and they actually used to call it Stock Car Derby 
back in the 60s. So we're kind of drawing upon our roots. And so we'll, again, be talking about some of these in, in future episodes, like, uh, you know, here's a, a fire engine that I had made, um, a, a motor home. One of my favorites is my uh, steam locomotive train engine. I've even made a, uh, a Coke can. I w live in the Buffalo area and I actually used to work for the Buffalo Sabres. I made a Zamboni, uh, it has the Sabres logo on it and many others. Jason, you wanna show a few of yours? Sure. Um... Yeah, for those of you who have you know looked at at some of the uh, the stock car manuals and stuff, uh, you may have seen this one. Uh, my my uh, Lightning McQueen. This is probably one of the. Uh, oh, I don't even want to think about how many hours it took me to make this one. <laughs> when we talk about a disease, <laughs> this is this is one of the ones that uh, you know you know I and I've seen a lot of people make this car because it's you know it's an iconic car you know Lightning McQueen, but. Um, you know, for me, being at Sigma, I tried to make it as spot on, like to scale, look like, you know, actually what's in the movie, Lightning McQueen. And, uh, you know, so that's, you know, that's probably one of my favorites. Um, another, uh, you know, iconic Disney car, Herbie the Love Bug. Um, another one, I didn't keep track of how many hours went into that one. Um, and then, you know, some, uh, sometimes it's fun to do something that's not actually a car. This one was, uh, I patterned after my actual lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was one of the years that I was trying to be simpler. I thought, you know what, I, I, it was I, probably the year after this one. And I thought, you know, I can't spend that many hours. And, you know, of course, this was my simpler. <laughs> you know, where, where everybody else's simpler would be, you know, making a doorstop and trying to make it fast. This was my, my version of, of trying to make a simple car. And it turned out to not be all that simple after Jason all. has a rule that he said that he won't make anything that doesn't have wheels in real life. And so he, he kind of model, he goes, he goes after that. Now I, I don't because here, this is an ice cream sandwich. Uh, there actually, some have tried to take a bite out of it. Uh, it, it, you know, from a distance, it looks like a real ice cream sandwich, but ice cream sandwiches don't have wheels in, in real life. Yeah. And that certainly wasn't something I limited my kids to or anything. You know, they, I'd let them make, you know, whatever they wanted to within the, the limits of what you can do with that block of wood. Right. Um, that was just kind of my own challenge for myself. I'm, I'm not saying I, I, you know, don't like anybody else's cars. If it's something that doesn't only really have wheels, it, it was just a challenge for myself to, to see, okay, what, what's something that has wheels on it and how do I make a car out of that? And you know, that, that's how I came up with things like this, uh, the, the Fisher price, yeah, uh, the pull toy, yeah, that's the, a great the, one. little Snoopy pull toy. Um, you know, certainly not a car, but, I mean, the actual toy does come with wheels on it. So mm -hmm. that was how I got away with doing something like that. Again, this was one of the years I tried to do something simple. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to make a really basic pull toy. My wife was like, no, if you're going to make a pull toy, it has to be the Fisher Price Little Snoopy. Like that is the iconic pull toy. So, um, you know, there, there's a few of these cars that really, uh, while my wife normally would just uh, tolerate my disease, there are a couple of years she's like, if you're going to do one, I want you to do this one. And <laughs> I didn't and, know that uh, yeah. your, your wife uh, had some input on some of your designs. Yeah, Yeah, there's a couple of these. Uh, same with the, the, the mystery machine. She was like, oh, you should do that one. And, and so it's much better if I go with one of her ideas because then it, it, it's easier to excuse the number of hours that went into it. <laughs> yes. It's like, well, that's what you wanted me to make. And the, so I wanted to do a good job. So that's what it took. Yeah, with all the, the, the screen time issues that are going on out there, yeah, you've spent a lot of hours on this, but there's a lot worse things you could be doing with your well, time sure. than making a derby car. Yeah. It, 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 we, we know it's a disease, but yet there are so many teachable moments in a derby. And in a future episode, I'm going to talk a lot about those teachable moments because if you're a parent, this is such an excellent activity to do with your son or your daughter, like I mentioned, you know, Christian Service Brigade is is uh, gender specific for males, but we also uh, do encourage uh, the the girls to to have their their own derby. Because I remember one year when I uh, we ran the girls derby at my church, this uh, man came up to me and he said, "Thank you so much for doing this. I only have daughters," and so you know, 
that you don't want to take that away from a man who, if you limit it to just the boys racing. But again, in future episodes, we'll talk about that. And there are so many lessons that can be learned for the boys and the girls as well, at, you know, participating in the Derby. So we'll go over that in some future episodes. Hopefully you've enjoyed our nuttiness here on the, the two Derby nuts, and we'll see you on the next episode. These episodes, again, are brought to you by Stock Car Derby.